people. Welcome to another vlog. Yes, I'm in town, just on my way into town. And, uh, well, today's Saturday, obviously. Originally, we were thinking of doing this next Friday, but I've decided to do it today. Uh, the exchange of the money for the holiday, because we go away a week today. And uh, so just in case we come up with any, well, come up, up against any issues where basically the place we go to doesn't have enough euros to give us for the money we've saved and everything for spending and that. Um, so we're just going to make sure we get covered and that we have a, a week's notice, you know, to sort anything out that we might need to. So on my way to meet up with Smithy now. It doesn't quite seem real that we are like a week away <laughs> for this holiday in July. Um, it generally feels like only about a, what? Only feels like we booked the holiday a week ago to me. The amount of time that's gone by. I mean, we booked this holiday like three or four months ago, maybe maybe about four months, maybe four or five months ago. Um, yeah, it's been a fair little bit since I put the holiday request in and everything. And uh, well, it's finally here. And uh, but we need to make sure the money is sorted. So that's the priority today. And we're going to get some extra bits for the holiday: sun cream, after sun. All that kind of jazz, toiletries, things like that really. So yeah, you're going to get a bonus bonus vlog. I originally was going to do a vlog on Friday, some point on Friday, of me packing and getting done. So like a pre-holiday vlog on Friday, but you're going to get one today and on Friday now. Because this wasn't the plan today, originally. So, look at you, you get more of this face. <laughs> So yeah, I'm currently walking through city centre of Hull now. Um, so I'm gonna go and meet up with Smith there and then get sorted. Hey, <clears throat> I am back home. Uh, back home from town, been home about roughly an hour. Um, I was going to try and see about getting Smithy in on the vlog, but to be quite honest, I thought it's maybe not a good idea because it's not really a good idea to be talking out loud and especially talking about money and everything like that in public it's not a good idea at all because you run the risk of somebody overhearing you that's maybe not a very good person and want to take the money off you because uh, I did have um, a decent bit of money in the envelope before we got it exchanged um, and obviously after we got it exchanged even though it was in euro so it'd be kind of useless in the UK but unless you went to somewhere else in the UK that, you know, takes euros. Um, but, uh, but yeah, all went well. Uh, we've, we ended up, we went around about three different, three different places just to see what the exchange rate's like. <clears throat> ended up going into what, another shopping centre. We've got three shopping centres in Hull. Um, pretty much all of them are crap. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we went into one called Prospect Centre. And uh, went in there, and that one seemed to have the best of what we saw, um, uh, exchange rates. So we went with that one. Uh, so, yes, the money is all sorted. It's been shared between me and Smithy, so we've got equal amount each. And, uh, yeah, it is uh, on like Donkey Kong now. It's We got sun cream after sun as well while we was out. Um, I got a UK, I got a Europe and UK um, wall adapter plug as well. I thought I had one for charging my phone. I thought I had one, but uh, I don't exactly know where it is. So I got a new one, but it has three ways of charging your phone. It has a, a USB and a Type C USB as well connection into the actual block itself, as well as the plug. So I, if I wanted to, because um, obviously I'm going to be taking my um, power bank with me. So my power bank's going to need to be charged as well if I use it. Uh, so we're going to probably be out for quite considerable amounts of time sometimes. Uh, probably going out, maybe have a meal, 
drinks out, things of that nature now and again. But not not all the time, because end of the day we do have um we have got the package deal thing, all inclusive deal. Looks we've got all inclusive. So exactly we don't really need to go out every single night for you know spend every single every single night and day for food so we've got uh, obviously breakfast lunch and dinner all free with the packet well not all free but you know what i mean it's part of the package and uh, we also get um <clears throat> house beers and house spirits free as well um obviously you pay for the name stuff but the house stuff's usually free with the all-inclusive so we're going to be taking advantage of that no doubt um and uh a couple of times we probably might go out for a couple might maybe a couple of times all the way might go for a meal that's what you do when you're on holiday you go for a meal but for for most of this holiday because obviously salu we're going to salu and we've never been we've heard a few other a few people that we've we've like mentioned it to uh have apparently been to salu and they say it's absolutely fantastic so it does have pretty good ratings from people that have been to Salu. So it's quite good to hear that we're on, we're not going to a down and out area where there's nothing to do. It, it looks like there's plenty to do. There's um, things you can go, places you can go that is either a short bus route or a train away. Because um, we are thinking maybe going to Barcelona for the day, which I think I've mentioned in a previous vlog. And it's a basically it's a, obviously via the train. Apparently, there's only three trains that actually come and go from Salu. Uh, so there's only three trains, which makes it a little bit more easier to find and navigate. Um, even though we don't speak any Spanish, but yeah, no doubt it'll probably be translated in English. No doubt because the, you know the help that maybe anyway. Most places have like information stuff like translated in other languages, <clears throat> but we'll we'll find out. So we are thinking of going for maybe seeing about if there's any excursions going on as well, um, things like that. Uh, see if they're in the, on the notice boards in the hotel. See if they've got anything, because when we go, we essentially are going to be a uh, peak summer pretty much. So a lot of the attractions and a lot of stuff should actually be starting to reopen. Um, I know there's meant to be a theme park or something nearby and a water parks and things like that. But I like swimming. I, I do like swimming, but Smithy doesn't. Smithy doesn't really do swimming. Um, so if any if if any of the two of us are actually going to be swimming or have a pool day, it's going to be me that's going to take advantage of the pool. Mostly, so we are. I mean, obviously, we're gonna. I'm gonna take advantage of that. I've got some new, I've got some new shorts, new sw uh, swimming trunks for that, just in case we do decide to uh, have a pool day now and again. And uh, so, yeah, we're gonna take full advantage with that. So, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it now. I just, I get a little bit anxious before when I'm traveling. Um, so, you know, obviously I suffer from anxiety and it doesn't really take much for it to start to trigger me a little bit. Um, it's just, for me, I mean, I, I also, I, I get a little bit of travel anxiety, if you can call it that, if that's a term. But uh, but I get a little bit of travel, in, travel anxiety, even going to TFN. Um, I've been to going to auto assemblies and TFNs for a long time now. As um, I've been going since 2010. I've been going to the I've been going to conventions since 2010 and I still get a little uneasy. I still get a little bit anxious um even just going on just going on 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 the coach. Uh, but the thing is is <clears throat> it, I think for me it's more the run up to <clears throat> it's more the run up to getting there. It's um not so much coming home. I don't really have the anxiety coming home. It's going. It's like because obviously there's stuff going through my head. Like shit, have I ever remembered this? Do I remember to pack this? Do I have my confirmation letter? Do I have this? Do I have that? Uh, for going away to Spain, do I have my passport? Do I have this? Do I have that? <clears throat> so you know, 
is everything that I have got in my case regulated and allowed on the plane and things of that nature. So it's basically thinking like that and it usually gets me in a bit of a state sometimes and I start to really kind of uh, get a little bit panicky. Once I'm on the plane, like obviously, obviously Benidorm was the first time I ever went on the plane. Flying on the plane, I had no problems whatsoever. I, with it being my first time, I was expecting to be a little bit anxious because I've never been on a plane before, uh, up to that point. Um, but yeah, when I was on the plane, taking off and landing and everything, I, I, I was absolutely fine with it. I had no problems with being on the plane. It's just going through the security procedures, going through security and having to surrender everything over so they can check it all and everything out your pockets and all that stuff. Going through all that stuff and everything, it gets me a bit anxious because I don't like it when people are looking at me like and trying to judge me as a as a wrong person, even though it's their job to do that, to watch people of any sort of, might, might look a little bit odd. And they might want to pull them to one side, make sure they don't have any drugs on them. I understand, I understand they are doing a job, they're trying to do a job. But it's it, it's just how people look at me sometimes, and even though it's the job, but yet yeah, they look at you like you're pe pretty much like you're a possible offender, and that sometimes gets me a little bit anxious as well. I will be fine. I will be fine. I know I will. Uh, I'll hopefully will be fine. Uh, everything's pretty much all sorted. I've got my passport, got the money sorted now, got all the confirmation, all the paperwork that I need just in case anyone asks for confirmation of anything. So I've got all that ready. Um, got sun cream after sun, like I said. Got that sorted because, like I say, I am pretty fair skinned. Um, I, I don't look it because I look brunette, but um, I am actually naturally blonde, <laughs> which some people probably would be surprised by because I am quite simple minded sometimes, um, or most of the time. But uh, but no, um, we've got after sun just in case we do get a, a little bit of a sunburn or we forget to, or one day we forget to put sun cream on or whatever and we're out in like 30, 30 Fahrenheit or whatever, 30 degrees or whatever and you know whatever so at least we've got something to put on to, to treat the burn at least, that's the main thing. Um, yeah. And it hasn't been the, it's not the first time I've had really bad sunburn either. I remember when I was at what when I was a, when I was probably in my teens, we went on a caravan holiday, and uh, Sam came with us that year. Uh, Sam Sam came now and again. Um, he actually joined me and me and my mum and my dad. And uh, my mum said if if Sam wants to come, he's welcome to come with us. So Sam Sam, and another friend of mine called Chris as well. Um, he he only came on one holiday, but that's uh, that's going to be an interesting story to tell. Actually, fuck it, I'm going to mention it in the vlog. But yeah, um, yeah, one time, two of my mates, my mum, my mum, my parents allowed me to have two mates one time um, to 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 come with us. And uh, but yeah, that was an interesting one. That was certainly an interesting holiday. Um, kind of he, yeah. I don't really talk to that guy anymore. Obviously, obviously, I'm not talking about Sam. I'm talking about my mate Chris. Well, not mate anymore. He's more. Yeah, I don't really talk to the guy anymore. He's a bit of a weirdo. Not weirdo, as in done anything come towards. He's just. He's very. I don't know how I can say it. I've got to be careful with what I say, but let's just say he's pr pretty much been groomed by his parents and. Oh, his mother specifically. Um, you know, oh my precious little boy, very proper mummy coddled, and very overprotected um, by his parents and everything. And he's not really had full free range to do what he wants, and he doesn't have much confidence. Even though I've got probably got more confidence than him when it comes to being social and things. But, uh, but yeah, the guy has problems, and I I felt I feel for him in a, in a somewhere. I'm pretty sure he is probably on the spectrum, but his parents, so his mum specifically again, wouldn't, didn't want him to be tested, even though I think the school suggested that he might need to be tested for being dyslexic or probably have Asperger's or on some sort of spectrum, um, because he generally has something, he has some sort of problem 
that uh, caused him issues with learning, attention and things of that nature when he was at school. Um, but I think his mum didn't really want her, her, her precious child to be bullied and to be seen as a geek or to be seen as not as good as as uh, or not to be seen as good as anyone else or whatever that kind of shite. Uh, so basically, I mean, I'm pretty sure he also needed glasses as well because he had a real thingy squint. Like he he, he would go like that a lot and mess around with his eyes and everything and. We think that he probably needed needed glasses for reading, but he never he's never worn glasses in his life since I knew him anyway. Um, but yeah, but that was an interesting holiday with my mate with when when Sam and Chris came on one year. Um, basically, I ended I ended up getting um, I ended up. This was when I was probably still at school. Yes, it would have been. It would have been when I was at school. And it was probably either... I think it might have been the final year of school. So this would have been like back in like... When I was about 16. Going on for 16. And uh, so the, the, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go away with... Um, with mum and my dad. Sam and Chris. And uh, basically... I kept it... Well, I mentioned it to Sam. And, and Sam didn't mention anything it was just it was a kind of a confidential thing between us my, my parents and Sam because we knew Sam was trust trustworthy enough to not say anything to Chris because we knew what Chris could be like at times he could get really really jealous of other people's success and other what basically if any and if basically Chris had this had this notion in his head if somebody got like the latest bit of tech or something that was better than what he had. He had to go. He had to go and go up on them as well. So he had to go and ask his parents to get himself a new console or a new phone or a new watch or something. He always had to go up one to try and make himself look better, uh, bigger than you. And uh, that's one thing why I didn't. I don't talk to him anymore because I don't like people like that. I generally don't like people who think they're better than others, just because of something material. It's a load of bullshit. Um, or social st status, all that bull crap. Even though it doesn't really have any social status, to be quite honest. Um, but yeah, so I ended up getting this thing. Um, what was it now? Oh yeah, I got like a, I got a what was it? An apprenticeship sort of tester thing uh because when i was uh i was looking at going to college for motor vehicle mechanics i did go to college for motor, motor vehicle mechanics um when, when i finished school in 2006 i went straight to college and i was at college for three years i did um city and gills uh i can't remember the code but i did a city and gills while i was still at school in my final year and then i did two imr level one and level two of of it afterwards when uh, when also at college so i did three years with college um and uh so basically that's what i ended up doing after call after school went went to college and uh basically because i think i was this would have been the final year so i would have been doing my city and gills and my dad worked at leckenfield uh, leckenfield is a civilian army base and uh, but basically it's a training facility as well for logistic drivers, uh, basically learn, learning to drive the trucks and other military vehicles and uh, and also training personnel as well for for deployment and things. And um, my dad used to work there. My dad was a he wasn't in the military, but he was a civilian uh, driving instructor. My dad uh, used to be a uh, he used to be a HGV driver when it uh, before he started at Leckenfield. So for many years he used to he used to drive lorries, big proper Arctic lorries, articulated lorries. And um, so yeah, my my dad my dad got a job uh, at Leckenfield, and he kind of managed to pull some strings, and he got me into the he, he got me uh, well I managed to get in for like a little apprenticeship thing. Or could have become an apprenticeship. Nothing really came of it. I don't know what exactly happened, but nothing actually came of it in the end, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so I got accepted into Leckenfield, 
um, to basically work in the mechanics garage as like a little apprenticeship thing to get me some training. So I was working on military vehicles. <laughs> uh, so I was working on military vehicles. I was working on tracked vehicles like uh, armored personnel carriers that are on the roller tracks. I can't remember their actual names. I think they were bobcats, maybe. I know there is something called a bobcat, uh, which was like for snow or sand. Uh, it had the tracks on it, or for mud, things like that. Um, and I was also working on actual big military vehicles. Like um, I won't work. I didn't want working on tanks or anything like that. But it was, I don't think they actually have tanks on there. At least I haven't seen any. But they have mostly just the uh, the personnel trucks, like troop carriers, things of that nature, and uh, logistic, basic logistics lorries. And so I was working on all that in the warehouse, and uh, I got on with the guys in there. And um, but at the end of it, I was actually they were actually considering on actually possibly hiring me. Uh, they was very happy with how I conducted myself. I got involved. Um, and all that kind of thing, so they're quite happy with me. But unfortunately, nothing actually came of it in the end. I'd never actually pursued mechanics after after leaving college. I never really pursued it as a career. Mostly because, long story short, I'm not going to go into all this because it'd take me forever. But basically, at the time when I finished when I finished college or about to finish college, the credit credit crunch hit. And it caused a lot of local garages and everything to um, close. So a lot of local local independent garages closed due to uh, everything going up, inflation and everything. And uh, unable to pay the, the staff um, and all that kind of thing. So a lot, a lot of places folded. And also there was another thing where uh, a lot of garages re refused to take on apprenticeship apprentices. Um, so a lot of them actually pulled out of the whole apprentice thing from school leavers or college leavers. So I didn't really have much of options except for going to try in like a, um, a dealership or something. I did apply for a couple things, but I never got anywhere. I also had a work experience at Land Rover dealership as well when I was at school, uh, which was part of like a program thing with school. Um, so yeah. Unfortunately, never, nothing came of it, and I ended up uh, going doing um, uh, stewarding at KC Stadium, which was my first actual paid job of some kind. It, it wasn't the best job in the world, but it was a, it was money, and it was the first thing that I did where I actually started earning money. And then I got the job at ASDA, and I was there for ten years, so I ended up going into retail, and then. Uh, Went to Morrison's and now at the factory where I'm at now. So I never actually pursued mechanics as a as a career, unfortunately. But to be quite honest with you, there's not much money in mechanics. Um, it depends where you go, I guess, or maybe or if you're lucky enough to get into a a dealership, you might they might pay a better rate. I don't know, but I know a lot of independent garages because obviously, yes, nowadays things have changed. You know the the rate of how much people get paid per hour and everything has gone up because a little bit since I left college, so since I left college, so it is uh, looks so it's national national living wage now, but it used to be national minimum wage when I was at when I when I was at college or about to leave college, but it's now national living. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, a lot of independent garages they can't really afford to pay you. Even though the, all businesses by law are supposed to pay you national living now, or pay you the equivalent of your age group, whatever your age is. Um, but well, well, it's one of just one of them things. It, 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 I mean, some good came out of it. I got some sort of knowledge of mechanics out of it to a degree. I'm able to do brakes, exhaust. Um, alternators, spark plugs, battery, you know, basic maintenance stuff. I'm able to, I still remember some stuff, and so that's good for knowledge. Um, and also, I met Smithy while I was at college as well, so that's how I met Smithy. So, if I didn't go to college, I wouldn't have met Smithy. It's one of those things, isn't it? It's fate, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Poor bastard, meeting me. 
Um, so yeah, uh, come on, oh, sorry, I've gone completely off track talking about Chris. So basically, that thing at Leckenfield I uh, mentioned about, basically Chris ended up finding out in past tense. My my, my mum mentioned it. I was I had to go. I was on holiday and I had to go to Leckenfield for the day to basically just kind of um, meet everybody and I had to kind of like you know talk to some people and. St- Unfortunately, it was a bit shit because I wasn't really looking forward to it because I was on holiday and I had to go and do this thing. Um, so I was a bit pissed off because I was like, I'm on fucking holiday for crying out loud. But anyway. Um, so yeah, so I did this thing. Chris found out and while while I was away, while I was gone at this thing at Leckenfield, um Chris, I took my tent, um, me, me, Chris and Sam, we were actually camping, we was, at, we had to, I took my tent, and we pitched it all, and, uh, so my mum and dad were in the caravan to themselves, um, and, uh, I thought to take the tent with me that year, so I had, uh, we were proper full on camping, the three of us, and, um, so while I was away, he ended up, Essentially storming off, did a proper paddy when he found out about being me going to um, Leckenfield, and uh, he basically was he was kicking my tent, he was proper paddy, uh, he was kicking my tent, he was kicking everything, he was on the phone to his mummy because he was pissed off with me because I probably because uh, I you know because I ended up probably might be getting a an apprenticeship working at, uh, in a military, military garage. Um, but <laughs> it never actually happened in the end, but yeah, he got real pissed off and real jealous and proper paddy. So he was never allowed to come on holiday with us again, which I didn't really want him to, <laughs> to either. Uh, so I found that out from Sam apparently. And I found out from my mum as well, that she was not happy with him at all. And, uh, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so, as well, talking about the when I uh, got badly sunburnt one year, uh, this was another year when it was just Sam that came with us. I was swimming in a swimming pool, I think, and it was an outdoor one. And uh, I stupidly didn't have any sun cream on. And uh, I ended up with severe burns on my shoulders. Right, like, basically, top of my shoulders, right round here, on the shoulder blades, both sides. Ended up having to go to A and E uh, hospital and had them treated with um, antiseptic, which stung like fuck. Uh, <laughs> and then I was bandaged up, so I looked like a fucking rugby player, or I looked for like an NFL player or something with big fucking shoulder pads. Um, one thing is though, I did get the attention of some ladies when I came out. I mean, at the time, I'd have been about fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, and um, and there was some. Uh, Quite quite nice looking ladies of my age. I've not been I've not been a naughty boy, but you know, obviously at the time I was about fourteen, and they would have been probably about fifteen, fourteen, something like that themselves. <coughs> <coughs> and um, so I got some attention, like, oh look at him, oh what's he done? I'm like, oh, I think I might get sunburned, or I might do this more often. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I know how bad it can be sometimes. I've been sunburnt bad a few times over the years, but luckily I'm fine still. But uh but yeah. I think that's gonna be today's vlog. That's all it was. Was to, I just I thought to do like a bonus vlog, even though I wasn't planning to do one this weekend. I was gonna leave it for Friday next week. Uh but yeah, a week today, people. A week today and me and Smithy jet off. We're all pretty much done. All we need to do is actually pack our bags ready. Um, so, yeah, all, all I really need now is to just pack up, um, you know, pack all my clothes and everything together. Passports ready, money's ready, uh, all the confirmation letters and everything for, for all that stuff is all there. So it's all done. It's all ready, all sorted. So, yeah, it's just a waiting game now. I've got one more week of work. I finish on Thursday. And then um, Friday is 
basically going to be a day of just make sure double check um we haven't forgotten anything get packed and then my car at some point on the friday has to my car has to go into uh the dealership for uh, for them to probably start the, the process well they probably might not start it when i first put, take it in on the friday but um but yeah so i've got to take my car in on Friday on the friday so that they've got it and they can have a look at the problem that my car's picked up with uh, something within the gearbox that's gone uh that leaves a look at or probably a new part putting in so that's going to happen on friday probably some point in the early afternoon or something like that probably go and get that sorted out or given in and then once i've done that um come home get everything packed get everything sorted ready and then on the saturday i believe the flight is at about 12 45 so it's about quarter to one uh, so we need to be there at least three hours before the flight so about nine o'clock in the morning we need to rough, roughly between nine and half nine we need to be there for uh, at the airport i mean um and then so i don't know what time we'll be picked we're picked up because obviously it's leeds bradford airport which isn't far from us but leeds can be at least an hour and a half um at least an hour and a half uh but depending on traffic or any issues so we'll probably might have to set off at least an hour or two early just in case there's any traffic so it's going to be an early one on the saturday morning but uh yeah it'll be good it'll be fine but yeah, so yeah, the whole anxiety thing, you know, I'll, I'll be all right with that. It's not going to be a problem per se. Uh, once I'm actually through security and once I'm actually sat on the plane, I'll be all right. It's just the, it's just the lead up to it all. Even, even TFN, you know, it's weird. All I'm doing is going to sit on a coach for four hours, three or four hours. But it's just once I'm sat on the coach, my anxiety goes. And once I get to TFN and once I get to the hotel... I am fine. I am completely fine. My anxiety is gone. It's just the lead up to the day, lead up to getting on the plane or lead or whatever I'm doing. It's just the lead up. Um, and then after that, I'm fine. But anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Um, this has been a lot longer than I thought it would be. But thank you for watching. And uh, so the next vlog from me, hopefully, if I've got time, uh, I will be doing a, 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 a pre holiday vlog on the friday that'll be uploaded um and then i will be trying to do as much vlogging as i can of um as i possibly can um obviously at the end of the day like i say it is a holiday for me and smithy so i don't want to be always on the camera but i will be doing some sort of video of uh, videography or whatever and taking pictures and things while we're there because end of the day we are going to be doing some sightseeing uh, hopefully some kind of some sightseeing and checking out saloons so checking out the local area probably going on excursions so there's prop going to be um possibilities or things to do where i might be able to use my camera and talk to people and use my camera so you can see what's going on so that's the plan so thank you ever so much for watching and i'll be back soon with more videos uh very soon um i don't know about obviously tra transformers reviews they've kind of taken a back seat from the now um i am going to come back with transformers stuff but uh yeah at the moment it's just going to be operation holiday vlogging for now and then when i get back uh, it's obviously tfn um when i get back it's like a, a month and then tfn happens so it's that so when i get home from this holiday it's going to be operation tf nation so i'm going to probably start doing my tfn related videos as well like the countdown videos because obviously with a month two um you know i'm going to kind of see about doing some tfn related videos um as well uh when i get back um and then maybe see get, getting a couple of reviews out as well before going away but we'll see but anyway thank you peace see you soon stay awesome stay safe and i shall see you very soon and anybody going to tfn i will see you guys very soon as well and uh i yes and breathe